This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It's time to get awesome, get geeky. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron, the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, the Beachview neighborhood where the train still rolls, just not 15 feet from where I sit right here uh, with me. We got in studio two weeks in a row. Whoa, it's John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter, the, the gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going? I can even see myself to the left of your head on the monitor. <laughs> yes, framing. <laughs> uh, it is a light week. Producer Missy's with us as well. Uh, but uh, we understand there's some sports puck ball going on tonight with the Dutters. So she is occupado. Uh, so it's, it's 80s night. I don't know. It is you... 80s night. It is 80s night. Bobby Cherry also is on assignment because somebody decided to make a speech tonight. Uh, so uh, we're going to get him rescheduled here in the near future as well uh, in the future here. So, And also, uh, off the top, I want to give a shout-out to Steve and the folks over at Bold, Port- Bold Sports Pittsburgh. Bold Pittsburgh Sports, I think I got the right order there, had a great Super Bowl brunch uh, with their friends from Fury Brewing uh, uh, here on Sunday. Please go check out the video over in Bold Pittsburgh um, with that and, of course, that podcast going up uh, shortly, if it hasn't yet, on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed. A lot of fun there uh, uh, that we had here the other day. And a lot of fun stuff coming this week, but we'll talk about that later. In the meantime, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. Hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesomecast on the tweeters. Uh, Facebook us, awesomecast, awesomecast group, uh, where there's a lot of great discussion. And your stories make it into the show uh, from over there and we talk about it a lot during the week in technology and in video games and, and stuff. Uh, so uh, thank you, everybody that participates over there. Also, thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com, Saturdays at 9 a.m., as well as the 405Media.com that carries us every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. And there might be some rumblings about some new streaming partners coming up here in the near future. We've got a few messages this week, so hopefully we can announce those soon. Also, uh, check us out every Tuesday live at the Awesome Cast Facebook page at 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, unless Sorg's delay starting is a note here. Uh, hey, we, we ran pretty close on that today. Uh, and also, thank you. Also, if you're interested in advertising or being in a studio audience to see a recording, see how we operate here. You know, some aspiring uh, video and podcaster people that have been uh, uh, talking with us about wanting to drop in. You are welcome to, and you can arrange that with uh, producer Missy at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, thank you, everybody contributed. I know the, the Patreon... Um, the Patreons came through. I know they were a little delayed this month. Things were a little weird with them uh, across the board at Patreon, but uh, I think, you know, great platform for everything going on there. Thank you, our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level. Here's a little sip of coffee for you. Uh, our friends Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, and our friends at the Fan of the Show and Dollar Level, Michael Fedor, uh, that's been uh, on there, I think the longest uh, contributor over on Patreon. Thank you so much. To all those guys, you can contribute to help keep the lights on here in the studio or replace lights as we've been doing lately <laughs> in the studio at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Chilla, are we all gaming tonight? Like, are, is, 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 are we on the gaming vibe tonight from the looks of things? I, yeah, from the looks of it. Well, and there, it's, a lot of stories, like a lot of news. That's the that's where the news is at right now. That's right. So I, I want to go with, um, let's go with yours first. Uh, what's, what's going on in the game world for your awesome thing of the week? <clears throat> so have you heard of Titanfall? I is this this is the one it came out a few years ago on Xbox One a you it was a first person shooter but you could always also get into a mech you could earn your way into a mech you can earn your way into a mech you played a little bit of this, right? yes I I was okay. a huge fan of the Titanfall and there was a Titanfall two I got that um, that studio from EA has brought in 
Apex Legends, which following in the Fortnite footsteps of Battle Royale, mm -hmm. um, they released their game yesterday for free. Um, it's kind of, to me, like a mashup between Fortnite and the we're going to drop you into a map kind of perspective. But it also, to me, also has kind of the Overwatch feel where I think there's eight classes mm -hmm. of character that you can pick from. You get set up in teams of, I can't remember if it's three or four, um, 20 squads of three. Um, so 20 squads of three get put in. It's kind of like hot potato when you get dropped in. You can, if you were the person that gets to pick where your squad's going, mm -hmm. you can pass that to the next person. They can pass it to the next person. They can come back to you. Um, but someone in your platoon or squad or whatever gets to pick where you actually land. Um, and then you start playing. What I thought was really interesting in this, and I don't know what your MO is when you play Fortnite, but typically when I play Fortnite and I die, I jump out of the game and then find a new one because I'm right. not going to sit there and wait. For... Unless, so I've been, I've been big on the, you watch, you know, you watch what's going on and that's how we kind of learn how to play. When Thanos uh, was in there, I watched. Yeah. But I, after that, it was kind of meh. Okay. All me. right. But, uh, you know, in general, because I, I don't, you know, I still, man, I haven't played for a couple of months a whole lot. So I'm still, I'm not exactly an expert. So it's still like kind of seeing like how people like, you know, do these crazy builds like like out of nowhere and everything um, is always kind of interesting to see. So in, in, in this game, though, your teammates have a certain amount of time to get to you to revive you. Mm -hmm. And if they don't make it there in that amount of time there's a banner left behind. And if they collect that banner and get it back to a respawn beacon, you can come back in the game as well. Okay. So I think it's an interesting add on to the game. The other thing is as you do better and you become like the champion, your picture and name gets put up on posters all over the inside of the game, hmm. which can tend to kind of make you a target because um, <laughs> I think you actually get bonus experience for for getting the going after and getting the champion. OK, um, I, I I'm pretty impressed with the game so far. I've only played played one round. That's all I had time for. Um, but I do plan on picking this back up. What actually spawned a lot of conversation for Kraus and I at work today over lunch was comparing it to Fortnite and Fortnite's ability to cross play. So I can pick it up on the switch from a Fortnite perspective. I can pick it up on the switch. Um, I can, if I'm upstairs, I can pick it up on the Xbox. I can, I can pretty much launch it from any endpoint that I have and uh, iOS, Android, whatever. Um, the other thing with Fortnite that I like is when I jump from device to device, I bring my skins with me. I bring all of that kind of stuff with me. Um, Apex Legends is only available for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC right now. They are only. Was, they alluded to the fact that there might be a Switch version in the future. Um, but they will never they may bring in cross play where you could I could play on the, my switch and play against you on your Xbox mm -hmm. but there will never be portability in the game where I have my character and I can run that character on any of those devices like I can in Fortnite that's interesting so especially you know where we're at right now and I, I don't know what Fortnite is doing differently now that other games can't do they have to build these tools um, I think Riz shared with us a story. Uh, actually, several people, several of us shared a story about Xbox Live uh, to cross platform play coming to like Nintendo Switch, iOS, Android. Uh, so, which is got to be a response to Fortnite, right? It, In Rocket League. Yep. <clears throat> the interesting thing is, is the game developers made mention that 
it was a decision they made early on in the development process and they've kind of painted themselves into a corner in that realm and it's not something that they can even add they feel they can even add the, the apex game. people can't cannot add because they didn't do it from scratch right okay so and that that's an interesting comment and when we get to the the xbox story i, I think it's worth worth bringing up mm-hmm. but i and i ran into this problem with overwatch i would have i actually considered purchasing overwatch for the pc Mm -hmm. purely based on the fact that in the hopes that i could pick up and continue where i left off and you currently have it with xbox and i currently have it with xbox yeah and blizzard's like no we're never gonna bring that so i'm like yeah you're never gonna get my 30 so (laughs) so now people are so used to um the idea of of this concept right Mm-hmm. that when you don't have it as a feature, like it seems like, you know, it's like something simple like cloud saves seems like a feature that just is, it makes sense. And I'm pissed off when I have a game on my phone that doesn't support that, right? And mm-hmm. when I clear my phone, right? So like it, it just, it's going to turn, it's going to turn a lot of people off to something like this. Well, and the kicker to me was in the, in the, in the um, Overwatch perspective, I was willing to repay for the game. Mm-hmm. Like I would have kicked another thirty bucks out. Yeah, as long as you could talk to each other, as, right? As long as, and I didn't even care if I could talk to the cross platform. I just wanted to bring my skins with me. I didn't even care if I brought my level with me. I just wanted to bring my skins with me, and that isn't even possible in that realm. So I wonder if this will become a decision point, um, and will influence. In this case, I mean, you really can't influence buying power power because the game's free Mm -hmm. um but to me it kind of locks you into like now i have to make sure okay if i'm going to continue down the path with this game i'm going to keep playing on xbox and i'm never going to jump to the pc or when they come out with a switch version or do i kind of play leisurely and decide that switch is my primary account where I try to get all the skins and get all the level ups because right. It's just like Fortnite, right? Where as you go throughout the, the, uh, what do they call it? The season, you earn those power ups, those power ups, then get you coins, credits, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, there's more incentive for being a long time player in there. So now I have to be a long time player on the same platform, which is still okay. And again, I want to, you know, I don't think everybody has this problem. I think most people, most would be like, I'm a PC person, I'm an Xbox person, I'm a PlayStation person, I'm a Switch person, right? I so, don't know. So most of the, it's an interest. It's an interesting question that I'd actually like people to comment back on is how many people are at least two systems. Mm-hmm. That'd be yeah. interesting to find out. PC, yeah. even if it's PC and Xbox or. Xbox and Switch. The beautiful thing is sitting here, I already hit the thing on my app on my phone to install Apex Legends on my Xbox One sitting over here. And I don't know if it's kicked on and actually doing it, but... um, It has not kicked on yet. I had that problem last night of trying to get it to remotely power on to install. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I usually don't get that. Or I'm sitting at home doing it. I'm not on the same Wi-Fi. But anyways, um, and actually, I I might have the Xbox on a different Wi-Fi than my phone, so that might be a reason too uh it'll be interesting to see what apex legends does uh, it, you know it it, it it i think it's a little bit of a different um equation because it's not something that starts on the phone or something like a mm-hmm. Fortnite. and i think that's what really opened up that cross-platform play like the idea you can start on your phone like this little device and go to your playstation is, is crazy right I'm, I'm interested to hear your story too on the xbox because i have the xbox one x mm-hmm. and people are saying that the xbox one is a little laggy or oh. it's, it seems like there it's it seems there like the, go. The, the console showing its age which i find hysterical because when you look at the longevity of the 360 yeah yeah, yeah. that that they, well i think i think it might be program forever. laziness because i was reading a story yeah. um about how kingdom hearts 3 they compared to like the playstation xbox like like the new and old like the hd versions the higher power like the pros and the x's right mm-hmm. and they said that there was like you know it was amazing how bad something that should be simple and rounded like a kingdom hearts as cartoony and how jaggy it was on like an Xbox one. So again, a, a, when you give all this power, sometimes it does incite a little bit of laziness 
you know, look at bloated applications like Adobe Photoshop and Word, for instance, over the years from our app side. All right, my awesome thing of the week. They're so far into this one. Also gaming, I'll try to make it a little quick here. Oh man, should I download this game on Origin on this on this PC over here? I have it'll probably melt this thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's something if you use Origin's account, you get some kind of bonuses. Ooh, just so you know. I'll at least like at least in, you know put it in the collection for when I have a better PC. Mm-hmm. The best PCs I have are the ones streaming the show. It just, it's like it's it's so, like it's like games with cold. Yeah, exactly. Just put them, at least get it in there. Oh no, I got a lot of that, dude. You know how many games I own that I have never played. Is I just gotta collect them all. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a digital game horror. We've talked about this problem before. Mm-hmm. Anyways, my story of this week: Marshmallow. <laughs> Let's talk about Marshmallow. Apparently, he's a DJ. I just added him on my Google uh, uh, Google Music service so I could listen to some of this. But apparently, there was the um, a a Fortnite Marshmallow concert uh, that took place. There's a video out there if you want to check it out. And also, you can apparently listen to. The mix is here um, exclusively on Apple Music, but he's got he's got music on most platforms it seems. But uh, yeah, they 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 had a Fortnite concert featuring Marshmello spinning the hot tunes all night long. At least there's, ten, there's a ten minute video at least going on going around out there that uh, we found uh, according to this Wired article. But uh, this is cool. So this is kind of, and of course being Fortnite, everybody can dance. <laughs> so uh this is I, I you know it was something about you had to be on a certain server for this to work and i don't think it was like a persistent everybody on there was like in the same space kind of situation like it's you know maybe it's kind of uh, uh, the the console is kind of duplicated across servers and if you're on the same one with everybody um so it, it, if you're on music is quite a sight. you got to see this video like there's a giant stage there's people uh playing on uh dancing on stage and and there's a there's marshmallow hanging out there on a turntable in the middle of it it's a and there's fireworks looks like falling from the sky uh it's uh th- that's a lot of fun this this really this feels like the next step of like like second life did this where there were like concerts in the, in their space and everything right and uh and i feel like it, like fortnite is kind of the you know again something built to do something specific you know build things in in and you know you know, kill people uh, in the game, but now they're you know using as this persistent world, persistent experience like this. Um, I, I don't know. If you're looking at the video here on the feed here, what do you what do you think of this being being an, another avid uh, Fortnite player? I think it's I think it's an interesting concept, and I totally agree that this is going to be something they continue to use as draw to the game. I'll be interested to see who else picks this up. As a Fortnite player, <clears throat> I didn't attend i guess the concert you could say Mm -hmm. but i didn't know about it exactly how did it work did you go into like a game mode Mm -hmm. and it kept you from getting Um, booted out well well, i'm wondering since the video is only 10 minutes if it was a rather (laughs) short concert but they say 200 million players attended but they also say i I don't think everybody needed to be in physical on server like in their player like I think there was a spectator mode as well, perhaps. Okay. Um, and it was it was something about you did have to be on a certain server in order to do this. So, um, you know, technicals aside, uh, this sounds like a pretty cool thing they had going on. A great uh, Wired article uh, is linked uh, that uh, that goes into uh, some of the background on this. And again, this is something I heard about on the way here, um, uh, not even an hour before the show. It sounds so cool, and I wanted to bring it up and catch the visuals on this thing. So that's my awesome thing. It's, a, it's just Second Life is back again in the form of <laughs> of this. Like even the VR persistent worlds haven't even haven't really uh, uh, taken on. So, all right, we got we got more stuff going on. We got your guys awesome things of the week uh, uh, in a moment, but in the meantime, want to give a shout out at somebody uh, a new a new uh, uh, sponsor on the show. I want to give a shout out to uh, a friend of the show. And he's been on, I think he was on ages ago. We had, or at least we interviewed him. Professor Buzzkill. You remember that name, Chilla? It does not. I mean, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. Well, you, you should subscribe to this. I think you'd have a lot of fun with this. You know, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. Thankfully, Professor Buzzkill makes learning history entertaining and humorous through his blog and podcast. You can explore, explore um, with Professor Buzzkill 
at ProfessorBuzzkill.com. Sign up for his YouTube page, uh, his uh, podcast. Subscribe to it uh, multiple times a week. He's uh, putting out episodes. He's a uh, he's a myth buster, a history myth buster, and uh, and likes to buzz right through those old myths and quotes, quote or quote out. Uh, quote or no quote i've known this guy for years and it's been a really entertaining podcast to p- drop into um he's got jeez i don't even know how many episodes I, I think he's in the hundreds if i'm not mistaken at this point um he's a legit uh history he's a history professor and everything like he knows his stuff and uh and again i want to dig up uh, the old interview we did with him back in the day uh as well maybe bring him in for an updated one as well but go check it out professor buzzkill.com another awesome Pittsburgh-based podcast that you guys can check out and all you history buffs out there. So, well, like I said, we have some we have some video game stuff coming on coming on here um, from you know you guys were submitting in the group uh, this week. But uh, first of all, we need to bring up the thing that we were jamming to before the show. And Riz put this as uh, at the note here is I'm just going to leave this here as the best Twitch channel ever. Um, this is our chicken life on Twitch. It is uh, multiple cameras from a chicken coop somewhere that he shared with us. Our wonderful chicken life uh, <laughs> category under science and technology. And what is it? If you, it, 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 you're just watching chickens. They're just, they're just chickens. But, uh, and, and I don't know if we were on, we were recording when we, when I brought it up earlier, it says feed the chickens by sending 50 cents in Bitcoin cash, Litecoin or Twitch bits. Mm -hmm. My question is if I give them 50 cents, is there like a light that goes on in their house and someone goes out there and sprinkles chicken feed? Or is it like I give them 50 cents in some kind of, Oh, I'm sure it's automated. Some kind of automated I'm thing. I'm sure it's automated. How do they automated. keep the chickens from being overfed? I don't know if that's a problem. Depends on what these chickens are here for. <laughs> Chicken <laughs> wings. Yeah, we're just fanning them up. Um, but no, you can check that out at Our Chicken Life. Um, we were playing music and jamming to the, watching the chickens. Um, we mentioned this briefly, but uh, Riz, and again, multiple people were talking about this before. Xbox Live is said to be coming to Nintendo Switch, iOS, Android. Um, this is going to be in a in a future update um, coming up here. Uh, so, man, I, that is... I mean, we already have, like, the, the Xbox Live, like, PC, Xbox crossover. I feel like this is, again, a response to the, like, Fortnite-ication... That's not the right way to say that. Um, of, 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 of cross-platform, right? Like this is this is kind of an answer to that. Now, there's obviously a need for it, or is it, or is it because Microsoft's coming from behind in the console race that they need to spread this across? You think, Chilla? So I question from a game developer's perspective: what is the incentive to get <clears throat> the developer to go to this method, this this concept? Because the only reason I say that. Because did you ever play Shadow Run mm. back in the day for Xbox 360? No, no. That was like one of the first cross-play games that Microsoft put out. Mm-hmm. Um, and they actually, you had actually in-game achievements where if you were on Xbox and took out a person on PC, you got you got like 10 gold See, achievement no, points and vice versa. We already have a little bit of that with, um, say, uh, Mortal Kombat X. If you, I played for a long time the mobile version of that. Yes. And then finally, over like Black Friday this past year, picked up um, a copy of it for the Xbox One, linked my account, my WP account or whatever, right? Um, and and it gives you stuff, right? Same with Injustice. Same with um, um, you know, Mortals. That was its own thing. But uh, it's uh, no, that's that's. But the, I guess where I was going, useful. But yeah, it's very useful, but I feel like those are like a different version of the game on mobile. That right. Oh, absolutely. Things on the absolutely. Other. And I, I really like that concept. They're more like an advertisement for the other game, but also mm-hmm. there's in game purchases and everything. And it's kind of more of a collectible level up thing than maybe the main game is. Oh, actually, actually, the Mortal Kombat is still like pretty much like that mobile game as far as levels and things like that. And also the leveling up that I did on Xbox or uh, on the on the phone version of Mortal Kombat carry straight over. That's nice to the game. 
when I, I when I pick that Does up. Does it carry back? I have I don't play it on my phone anymore because I got rid of freemium games. Okay. So um, um where where I worry about this is it's a very cool concept, but our developers gonna pick it up because I feel like we saw it with always the issue Shadow Run and then like didn't see it forever. Now we have the well, Xbox. You know, you know what's gonna incentivize them to do this? <clears throat> Fortnite. Everybody that wants a Fortnite clone or wants that success, that crossover success that Fortnite has, that persistent ability that Fortnite has, will do this. Also, how crazy is it going to be to see like Xbox Live on a Switch? On a Nintendo is it going to be that? So, also, how much of Xbox Live is it? Yeah how how much? Yeah, and and it, I, I saw who was someone in the chat commented was it Brandon? Brandon commented he has a PS3 and a Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, how many people today would buy the same game twice? Or are we going to go to this free model with skins and all mm-hmm. kinds of... I hope it's not pay to win. Like, right. The thing that's, right. to me, key about Fortnite is that gives no one a leg up. It's You buy your dances and you buy your skins cool. and you, it's a cool factor. Isn't there guns? There is are, no aren't there guns for you to, to you level up with or backpacks or something like that? The backpacks, but they don't give you anything. Okay. It's just, just a different looking glider to come in on. Oh, it's literally just a different and thing. And the, um, the ax or the hammer, the pickaxe type okay. thing. It's a different look to that. It doesn't add damage. It doesn't value. level up or anything. It doesn't okay. do anything like that. So I hope we, I, I worry, will we take a bad turn? towards a, a pay to win um and what again i would i would look at this and i would think okay apex legends they're saying that when they started developing the software portability wasn't going to be possible when that was a decision they made early on mm-hmm. i'm guessing they didn't make that decision last week yeah i'm guessing this game's been in development for nine to 12 months maybe mm-hmm. i or maybe more. more yeah so if microsoft released this today can you when patch are it we back gonna on, really yeah. start seeing this yeah yeah and how's that all gonna work it'll be interesting the other thing from that perspective is like if i'm a if if i'm developing the next <laughs> metroid am i going to get metroid over to xbox and I was I well, this is, and here's where well, yeah, I know I don't think it's the games. I think it's I I, you know, I don't think we're talking about Metroid. I don't think we're talking about like Riz is talking about Kratos from God of War being in Smash Brothers. Um, I I think you're talking about the um platform agnostic games like Fortnite, right? right? You're ta- you're not talking about uh, Halo. You're not talking you know necessarily. But I don't know. Would Microsoft be willing to make that jump? You never know. Or, uh, Nintendo is right with with at least. Mobile. I mean, there's another story here from Brandon here about Dr. Mario World is announced for mobile. So this year we're going to get Dr. Mario World and we're going to get a Mario Kart game, I believe, in March on our mobile platforms. Excited about that. Still rocking my original Game Boy cartridge in an advance uh, Game Boy Advance uh, on my nightstand. Uh, so <laughs> I'm excited for that little bit of an upgrade. Uh, I also still love I still love booting up the one that they had on the on the Wii. So. Also, very sad, very sad. I was at, I think it was an Eaton Park, and our server told us about how how prehistoric the Wii was. Um, mm. Ugh, prehistoric in what way? (laughs) Just they were very young, (laughs) probably pre them. Uh, So, anyways, um, no, it would be interesting. Sony, speaking of, uh, apparently filed a filed a uh, patent for backwards compatibility. Uh, for my right on this, it looks like it's it supposedly will be for full compatibility on the PlayStation 5. It, it was where the speculation is. Um, they kind of like stepped away from backwards compatibility, so it'll be interesting to see them kind of roll back into it. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be able to throw my PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 discs in this thing, but um, you never know. You never know. I good to see is there. I mean, there's these catalogs, and I'm glad to see all these all these consoles are like kind of observing their back catalogs right like but how do you how do you patent backwards compatibility because isn't everyone already doing it i mean my wii u plays my wii games my xbox one plays my 360 some of a, a portion of my 360 catalog i mean what's to 
patent here that gives I it's it's a patent in Japan and maybe it's just something specifically with PlayStation games. So, but I mean this is just a I don't know. Hopefully it's not a Hopefully they don't patent the idea and it screws everybody else over because that seems to be at least in America the way those things work. Finally, uh, producer Missy had one uh, where there's a woman. You know, we always worry about what's. What, I always worry about getting AirPods and losing those things. Um, and apparently, there's a woman who um, turned her AirPods into earrings in order to keep from losing them. Uh, did they? Because I saw the picture of them dangling. Mm-hmm. Did they show any of the pictures of her with them in her ears? Because I was wondering, like, how the earring, like, does it loop up? I, I think it didn't look there, that long there's enough, to me. There's enough there's chain enough? on these that I'm no. There's there's plenty of chain there's on enough there. Enough so, together paper clips. Yeah, wait, and she puts it in, and boop, there you go. If they fall out, you don't have to worry about it. So I, I that's all the problem. So so Chilla, we have to pierce our ears in order to not lose our AirPods. I know you're looking at it on the catch up video up there. Yeah. I have one piercing. I can I can give it a whirl with the chain. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you got kind of the top of your thing going. Yeah. Or or maybe if we could just attach them to like our glasses. Or maybe right. I can just super glue them in my ears. There you go. There you go. Just here all the time. <laughs> so uh all right. We got plenty of other stories we want to touch on here, but first we need to uh give a shout out to our friend who has literally fueled us this evening for this show. Our good friends down the road at Slice on Broadway. Uh, you can go check them out here in Beachview, right along the tracks here uh, on Broadway. Hence the name over in Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park. home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, who will be getting in season here in just a couple of months, I guess. Uh, so go check them out. Uh, supporting, perf- supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. Our friends that are... Always supporting the show for uh, with, with some awesome pizza. Go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, PJ's underscore slice on the Twitter. Go check out, they have uh, text and Instagram clubs, uh, specials going on all the time. Uh, and go check them out all over the city of Pittsburgh here. Thank you to our friends at Slice on Broadway for supporting the show. All right, uh, we have a couple uh, stories left here. Chilla, what, what do you want to touch on first? So did you see my tweet? Hmm? I think it was yesterday and today. And if you go down to um, number six, I have the five G's. You have the five G's. I have the five G's. Wait. Oh, I got this picture. I'll pull this up here. <laughs> um, so it was interesting. Yesterday I was on the train ride home and my phone got kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And then I looked up in the upper right hand corner and I had. 5g e signal not lte not 4g not 3g not what was it was the old ones gprs um i had 5g e so if you are and i'm this will start in the next version of ios 12.2 um at&t customers in certain areas will be flipped from lte to 5g e and what this means is you are capable of supporting 4x4 memo 256 qam and laa technologies i'm not 100 percent sure what all those are I know <laughs> so that's a lot of technologies i'm not sure the memo has to do with um multiple bands mm-hmm. running data simultaneously up and down but the interesting thing with this that I noticed is when I get right to about the studio, I lose it. And then I go back to LTE. Hmm. So there's something, there is something in the city that is different for AT&T customers than it is in like Dormont. Mm -hmm. So what kind of phone was this that it was on? This is an iPhone. Oh, it's an iPhone. Yes. And it's on the next rev of the OS. Okay. So it's on tw- I'm on 12.2 beta. And which which phone specifically do you have? The iPhone 10s. 10s. So is it, it so it's probably like this past year's iPhones, right? Like I'm not I'm not going to get it on an 8 pl- 8 plus. 
E correct. This okay. means that the iPhone 10s, 10s Max, and the 2018 iPad Pros are capable of 5G E and will show the 5G E badge. Hmm. The interesting thing is T-Mobile has been using this technology since they rolled it out back in 2014. Verizon followed suit in late 2018, and AT&T was the last carrier to, to, to deploy this technology. But like I said, the interesting thing is it's not available everywhere. Mm -hmm. So um, mileage may vary. It doesn't actually change anything it's to me more of a notifier of how you're actually connected mm -hmm. and i'm sure when lt or when 5g actually deploys for real because this isn't real 5g um how are they going to notate that so uh, yeah uh, uh ponders in the chat room calling out like just like this half step from 3g to lte it was like hts he says wasn't it like hspa, H -HSPA plus. plus and it, it, but when you had like an at&t phone it simply said 4g yeah meanwhile now if i see 4g on my phone it works like crap yep <laughs> so like, i'm like wait a minute this doesn't seem right and why then, why does it feel like i'm back on you know 3g 2g speeds when i dump down from this because it was, wasn't that much of a jump then i'm just used to lte i'm guessing it was because of the way that the bands work so with with LTE, with 5GE, which is actually LTA, LTEA, <laughs> you're technically, theoretically, you can get gigabit speeds. Okay. With, fi with true 5G, you'll have a theoretical true maximum 5G. of 20 gigabits per second. Mm -hmm. And latency as low as one millisecond, which we all know makes getting to pages faster and getting the content quicker. So it'll be interesting how that rolls out. I'm not sold on 5G. Just the idea that they need to, like, well, the range is not that good. So, like, the, the amount of antennas they're going to have to put up is ridiculous to be able to, to update on this. Um, so you're only going to get this, like, in the middle of dense cities it feels or very specific places like maybe maybe a, a a conference center or something would have this right so here's the question for you what's what's less expensive hmm. putting antennas up or running hardwire and that may be the thing right? and that's where i think we're going to see the differential is it's a lot cheaper for me to put one antenna on a pole mm-hmm and rebroadcast than it is but, for me to run oh, wire. So you pole, thinking, pole, 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 So you're pole. thinking like the poles that typically we would run wire, like every pole, every like what hundred feet or whatever, that gets an antenna. I'm that's my guess. Mm, interesting. I almost look at like look at like pit mesh, right? Right. You run. You can run off of your wire and set up pit mesh, mm -hmm. but across the street. They can grab another pit mesh and just add the pit mesh and bounce off yours, right? And extend that out right. without having to contribute the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that this would kind of follow the same mesh network. Just look, I mean, just look at where we've gone with mesh, even in the house, in your house. Um, I'm guessing they're going that route. And let's face it, a lot of this has to do with how much money they can make and how much cheaper they can do things. Um, and that's where I would guess that this allows them to go. Hmm. So uh, here's another one. Um, this is something I, this is interesting to see, but it's not entirely what I thought it was. I remember, Chilla, I remember back in the day, all of three years ago when I started flying on planes. Uh, and, and I remember getting on Southwest. I remember this thing called Beats Music. <laughs> it was a music service uh, uh, that, that the Beats you know, headphones used uh, that company and then they all got bought by apple and we have other things so i guess this is the next generation but if you're on southwest like you had like beats channels you could listen to right mm -hmm. um this felt like a little bit of like the next gen of that maybe but not entirely apparently if you are on american airlines flights uh and you and you have an apple music subscription you can connect to their wi-fi for free and listen to your Apple Music over the Wi-Fi. And I think most of the time, streaming services like this are not allowed 
on your Wi-Fi on a plane, you know, particularly like streaming video or something like that, unless it's something like, you know, they have direct TV through a browser, basically, right? And you can watch uh, uh, channels through that. So I don't know. Could be could be interesting. Uh, uh, just an interesting addition to this. But uh, it, it seems like all these guys have um, these kinds of connections. No. So if you're doing this, if you have an Apple Music, if subscription, I have an Apple Music subscription, I can log get, into the Wi-Fi for free to get to Apple Music. Apparently. Can I log into the Wi-Fi for free and go to Facebook? I don't know. Or is it just for Apple Music? Because the interesting thing to this, and to me, this is a way to get more Apple Music subscribers. And the only reason I say that is because I've noticed that I can do a couple of different things in Apple Music. I can hit the add 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 playlist, which then gives me a download button and I can download all that music to my device. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also noticed that any of the music that I've played recently that I didn't download must be cached in some manner. And the only reason I say that is because at the gym, I have very spotty connectivity from both a carrier and Wi-Fi perspective. And I can not have internet connectivity but it's like i always listen to the same playlist which is like an apple music playlist i listen to the same playlist for 15 minutes so i always listen to the same songs yeah yeah. and no matter what my connectivity method is i don't have to buffer i don't have to wait it's just cached somewhere on the device so to me getting on a flight i would have and being an Apple Music subscriber already, I would probably have enough content to get me through. But maybe not everybody. Maybe not everybody um, does it that way, it would, depending on their settings. Yeah, I guess. But so, I, I don't know. To me, it's because it looks like if you're, if you're not an a- Apple Music subscriber, you can even sign up for your free trial while you're on the plane. There you go. <laughs> it's mostly just saying, hey, this Wi-Fi is going to allow you to stream mm-hmm. from this su- service exclusively. But if you're Spotify, you're out of luck. So, um, I don't know. And we'll see how it works because, man, Wi-Fi and planes do not work all that great. So, uh, the wild thing, have you ever heard of this? If I sign up for just the texting plan on a um, Southwest flight... I still receive all my notifications from all the apps on my phone. I just can't respond to all of them because they, they only let you use specific like iMessage and Facebook Messenger and I, and WhatsApp. So. Okay, so it's letting you use those? It's letting you use those. But so they have I will, to open up. So they're, they, so they're opening up whatever port that is going to receive notifications. Apple push notifications. Oh. So the Apple push notification service is a common technology from Apple that... Apple has to be the intermediary for all of those. Mm-hmm. So, so if Facebook contacts Apple and says, Mike Sorg has a Facebook notification mm-hmm. and then Apple sends, says, Hey, where are all of Mike Sorg's devices? And if you don't open that up, you probably break iMessage and Facebook yes. messenger <laughs> and WhatsApp. So yeah, they'll you, all, they all won't work. So it's like, it's especially weird, iMessage. It's a weird loophole, you yes. know? So in the, in the meantime, it's like, hey, I just saw I got this Facebook, you know, notification. Text my wife, hey, can you answer this person? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, to, and, and do this. So I, I just kind of an interesting loophole I've noticed on my flights, at least. So hey, uh, tell us what Echo is doing with uh, books. So I just found, I just saw this on the way over here tonight. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about. Um, the different stuff Netflix has done with Choose Your Own Adventure. Bandersnatch and the Minecraft stories. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Amazon has jumped on the, the, the train with Audible. And they're actually using the original publisher that did the Choose Your Own Adventure. The one that's suing Bandersnatch for yes. using the term Choose Your Own Adventure. Which I guess is <laughs> Choose Co. I didn't know that was Choose Co. Of course. It sounds like a company from a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> but they have two of the books, Journey Under the Sea and The Abominable Snowman, um, available today. You can ask A-Train 
um, <laughs> to enable the service and to open Choose Your Own Adventure from Audible. Mm-hmm. And you will then get to pick between the titles. And there's a it'll it'll it has music. It reads you the book. And when it comes time to make a decision, it gives you the the options. It makes an audible. So beat. we so we have to choose it from like we have the we have to purchase it from Audible, right? In order to do this. I don't know. Do Hold you? On. Hold on. Alexa, choose your own adventure. The movie? No, no, no. Alexa, no. stop. You Sorry. say open, choose your own adventure from Audible. Mm. Hold on. Alexa, choose your own. In- no, I did it wrong. Alexa, stop. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. Alexa, uh, stop. Alexa, stop. Yes. <laughs> Well, I, I've been I've been threatening to to hook Alexa into well I'm sorry, uh, hook her into the board so we can actually talk to her on the show. Oh, that'd be fun. I I think it maybe when we get the board upgraded we can do that. We'll plug that in. We'll plug the Google Home in, and then like on the show we can te- like do. Weird, She'll have like, her own mic and headset. She'll have her own mic and headset. <laughs> and then we have to make sure we get something enough slice on Broadway for her too. So, all right. <laughs> Is there <laughs> is there a slice on Broadway skill? <laughs> because there should be. It. There should be. Throw that out to our friend Slice on Broadway. There should be an echo skill for that. Oh, okay, I had a couple of things, but I unfortunately didn't deep dive into them enough that I feel comfortable bringing up on the show. Oh, but NewsGuard, actually. I saw this. And so I there's been a that... lot of discussion about NewsGuard in this past week. A few podcasts like, like this week in Google where there are actual like news people. Uh, on there talk about this so the idea was you know maybe we brought this up as a story it was it's now standard installed in the microsoft edge browser but you can put this on any browser as a plugin and the idea is it it has its own editorial staff so you have to put your trust in these guys in this. <laughs> so so that's where a little bit of debate is: are who are these guys? What are, you know? What's the saying here? You know, some things aren't curated. But um, if you if you install this, and as you see articles linked, like on Facebook or Google or wherever else, um, there's like a a little check mark or green or, or red or yellow thing or a question mark or I, I've seen it identified as a comedy site before. Um, it will. It, it basically lets you know if the news source is uh, valid, I guess. So, and again, don't use it as the end all be all. But you know, if you're just kind of not sure, then it seems like a pretty good idea at least. And if you go to um, newsguardtech.com, um, it will. They'll just have a button in the corner for whatever browser you happen to be on to install it right there, and it's a pretty simple process. Um, I think this is good for, you know, anybody that is kind of worried about that these days about, you know, you know, quote unquote, fake news and everything um, to see or or if you keep sharing things or like me, where I get keeps getting shared articles from family members and then I have to pull up the Snopes article on why it's wrong. Uh, you know, it, this will kind of do it a little bit of built in when you explain that, you know, it's like here, this is a thing that can help you identify stuff that is not real you know, one way or another, or is that site that you're watching, you're, you're listening to, um, you know, maybe a little bit questionable in their methods and, and, and it's stuff, stuff like, are they fact checking? Are they second sourcing, um, you know, general tenants of journalism in some of these sites. So, um, a curious thing I've played with a little bit, notice the check marks and the pluses and everything. Um, but I'm not enough to gauge how good it is at least like stuff that I usually, you know, but I think the biggest thing is like when I see stuff shared on Facebook, I want to see what it does for pro wrestling news articles because nothing is more questionable than pro wrestling news articles to a point where a local news source here in the city um, quoted a pro wrestling news site, which I think is very questionable because <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so my question is, it sounds like, they're using curation and kind of background checks on sites and content and internal editorial. I want to make that clear and internal like editorial. NewsGuard has an editorial team, team from what I understand that helps curate. Like this is a site that is X. So d- does it give like a, 
Does it ever come back and say, I don't know? Like, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. There good. are, there are, sites. I would rather see, I don't know than it trying to make like a, yeah, a, no, no, a no. flip of a coin. There, there, there are sites from what I understand from the, 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 the people I've listened to, um, that it will come back as a question mark just, and just like not as enough people have submitted about this site. Okay. I have a feeling a lot of the, again, the wrestling news sites that I listen to or the, the, that come up on my feed and, and stuff for the other shows. I have a feeling a lot of those will be question marks because I, I can't imagine there's a large push to validate wrestling dirt sheets. But anyways, but I, it's something and maybe, you know, it's something that you maybe install on your grandma's computer or something. If you're worried about it, um, you know, it, it, it's it's hopefully a step in the right direction for a lot of people to help educate. And I think that's the biggest thing is educating on news, what it is and the sources and what makes a valid news source. And it seems the one small piece of the puzzle um, that, that you can add to somebody's browser. So, And then we find out that they've been taking your information all, the whole time and selling it to Russia. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? You know, these days with anything that you install on any service. Uh, uh, but, you know, we're just going to go on faith on that one. So, All right, Chilla. Anything else you want to touch on before we head out of here? Um, no, I think we have majority of mine sounds good to me all right well before we do head out of here i want to give a shout out to our good friend alex cars contributor on the show and some other properties we've had around here uh if you guys need help with a media and putting the puzzle the puzzle together for from a media branding uh to print and digital projects Alex does it all. Uh, he also does logos, merchandise, websites, even photo and video projects. Check out alexcars.media, Alex, K-A-H-R-S dot media for more information on that and how to get it. He's done, he's done great stuff with us. He's done DVD covers. He's done a website design when we were kicking off our indie wrestling.us website. And I know he's done t-shirts and media for a lot of pro wrestlers out there in the industry too. Go, go check him out at alexcars.media. And thank you for supporting the show in all the ways that he does as well. Well, uh, we are, like I said, we're going to be rescheduling uh, one Bobby Cherry uh, back on the show. Again, a whole new lineup of guests here uh, scheduled for that too. But in the meantime, I want to get in and please go check out the bold Pittsburgh sports edition that we did do this past weekend. We had a lot of fun. I know it was the um, pre Super Bowl edition. But there was a lot of, you know, they did their picks at the end and everything, but there was a lot of talk about uh, local breweries and sports in general and, and kind of generalized stuff there. But in the meantime, please go check out um, this Thursday morning at 10 a.m. We have a very special and different um, Pittsburgh Current podcast that's going to be going on over there with special guest adult film star Michelle James is going to be here in the studio, Chilla. Uh, and I heard about this. You heard about I got this. pre-released news on this. Oh, you got the pre-released news on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but go check that out. That'll be streaming over on the Pittsburgh Current uh, Facebook page. And please subscribe to that podcast as well uh, so you don't miss what's going on there. And uh, she was uh, featured in the sex issue for Pittsburgh Current, which is out on the stands, I believe, today. Um, so go check it out. And I did love, did you did you see the um, the, the, um, the survey they did for the sex issue, How Yin's Banging? I did. I saw the survey. I did not participate in the survey. <laughs> I did not either. I did not either. But it was it was it was a great when we had like the um, um, we have politicians in here and they're trying to <laughs> not, maybe not say that phrase entirely. But uh, though we had a lot of fun with those guys, a great show going on there. And um, go check out everything else going on at SorgatronMedia.com at Sorgatron on the Twitter for me. Chilla, where are you? Where you be? Where you I be am, on the I internet? Am at Chilla on the Twitters. I am. Well, I can't remember what my Twitch is. Now. And you'll be hanging out at Our Chicken Life on Twitch. I will. Be, you can find me at yes. Our Chicken Life, You're tossing gonna... my fifty cents to buy some feed for them. You chicks. gotta feed those chickens, right? Yes. Thank you, producer Missy, keeping us straight on the show here. With everything going on here, um, she's all over the internet. She's Rebecca's flaw on the tweets. You want to tweet at her, and you she's know, playing Galaga. She's playing Galaga. We, I don't know. She's over there on her phone. Oh hell, she's playing. I was I was making the reference to the uh, Avengers. That man <laughs> is playing <laughs> Galaga. I love that. He that thought guy we got wouldn't his, notice. He thought you wouldn't notice, but we did. That was like, was that the first Avengers? Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Still a classic. 
before everything got all grim and everything. So, all right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you to uh, our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.